last time. Well, we talked about some phonology outcomes of some experiment, like flipping coins or picking patients at random. The sample space, the set of all outcomes from the experiment or activity in question. Capital Omega will be used for the full space. We talked about what an event is. An event is a set of outcomes, so it's a subset of the sample space. And a little bit about probability functions. I'll say some more about those in a minute. And in the case where all the outcomes are equally likely, because we're flipping a fair coin or, or rolling fair dice or uh, we've really figured out how to choose someone at random, I argue that the probability of an event, okay, where A is an event, an event is a set of outcomes, could be found just by counting absolute value of A, I mean the size of set A, just the number of outcomes in it, divided by the size of the sample space. Um, for example, say we flip a fair coin twice. Well, so the possible outcomes well, here's the sample space, the set of all possible outcomes. And for a fair coin, it'd be equally likely we could ask what's the probability that the two flips match? So they're both, we get the same result on both flips. Well, that's not a terribly hard problem. The probability is going to be a half, but one way to see that, not the only way, say E is the event of getting both flips to be the same, it's an event, it's a set of outcomes. I mean, what set? Well, it's all the outcomes where both flips are the same. So the probability of E it's a matter of counting. There are two outcomes in the event. There are four outcomes altogether. The probability is a half. Well, let me say some more things. About the function P given by this equation. An equation that only, an equation that applies when we have equally likely events might or might not be the case. It's always between 0 and 1. Because right? uh,
after all, A is an, it's a set of outcomes. Omega has all the outcomes in it. So A is going to be some subset of omega. The smallest it could be would be to have zero members, but the largest it could be would if, if it were the same, so omega. In fact, let's say that. Property two. Well, we'll say it in two parts. Property 2.1. The empty event, the impossible event. Okay, so this symbol is for the empty set. And this equation says its probability is zero. Because we apply that equation, we count to see how many things there are in the empty set. It doesn't take too long. And at the other extreme, the probability of the certain event given by this equation would be 1. Because we, uh, the certain event, the set of all outcomes, so we're the numerator and denominator are the same. And thirdly, well, 3.1 for a finite sample space. Ah, could the sample space be infinite? Well, yes, it could be, but we start off looking at problems with finite sample spaces. Uh, for disjoint events. By disjoint, call these events A and B. By disjoint, I mean no outcome b belongs to both of them. They don't overlap. So the picture Venn diagram type picture, the sets A and B with this rectangle omega, the sample space. A and B are sets of events, but they have nothing in common. We can talk about the union of A and B. Well, the union of two sets, A and B are sets here, it's the result of dumping the two sets together. A union B in this picture would include A and it would include B both. And the probability of A union B, A union B is an event. It's a set of outcomes. And it follows from this equation that the probability of the union is just the probability of A plus the probability of B because if the two events don't overlap, the number of things in the union is just the number of things in A plus the number of things in B. An equation which would not hold if there was some overlap. Well, so put this into uh, our equation up there. The fraction breaks down into two fractions. Let me move the boards around. We're interested in how many outcomes we have relative to the total supply.
right? We can separate the fraction like this. Three properties of, of this function. And the reason I'm telling you this is that I want to go back to what's a probability function in general. Well, at least for a finite sample space. We said last time that a probability function with function assigning numbers to a such that some three properties hold, three properties held, but we didn't write down the properties. Now we have a probability function in general it's a function of numbers to events a number p of a to each event a so that those properties hold. Uh, 1, 2.1, 2.2, and 3.1. Well, for infinite sample spaces, we'll have a 3.2, but let's not worry about that today. Well, this is kind of an abstract notion, but so far we have one example of a function like that. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. I want to talk about how to count the ways. This came up a little bit at the end of the hour last time. some techniques that might be useful in determining the size of this set. I have in mind problems like the following. You walk into a restaurant and you look at the menu and you the restaurant has three diff salads, five different entrees, only two different desserts. Well, in how many ways can you order a meal? We count two meals different if they differ in any way. And uh, some fine print as to what the ground rules are. We insist that you order a salad. And that you order an entree. But uh, you don't have to order dessert if you want to. You can order a dessert or not. Well, it's something like the problems we looked at last time. We could imagine a, a tree to reflect your decision of what to do. If you choose the salad first, you've got three choices. Step two, you've got to choose an entree. It says you have to choose an entree. So you've got five choices.
There are 15 ways in which you could choose the salad and entree, but then you have to decide about dessert or not. So there would be three things you could do here. You could choose ice cream or the cake, or you could decide to skip dessert. Three different salads you could do, five entrees, And then you have to do a three-way choice, ice cream or cake or nothing. That's three. And there are 45 meals you could choose. Counting meals different if they differ in any, in any way. Well. I want to generalize this to some rule that will apply to some other problems. This is the multiplication principle. Counting the number of ways to do something that breaks down into several parts. In this case, there are three parts the salads, the entrees, and the desserts. What if we have, say, k tasks? Instead of just three, uh, we want some general rule that we can use when the number of tasks is anything. to do, and these are to be done in some order, the first one, and a second one, and a third one. And say task number one can be done in some number of different ways. Here, task number one is choosing a salad. We could do it in three ways. Say n1, n sub 1 ways. Task number 2 can be done in n sub 2 ways, and so forth. The last one can be done in n sub k ways. And then the number of ways to do all k of these well, it's like this problem. We can imagine a tree reflecting our decision process. First, the tree splits into n1 branches, and each of those then splits into n2 branches. The number of ways to do all the tests n1 times n2 times, well, you take all of these and you multiply them together. That's what we did over here. k is 3, n1 is 3, n2 is 5 for the second task, and 3 was 3. And we multiply them together. Last time we talked about making license plates. It's a case of the multiplication principle where we had to do seven things. We had to choose the seven characters to appear on the license plate. Let's compare that with a different restaurant.
problem B, if we think of the other one as being problem A, different restaurant. You look at the menu. It has three fish entrees. Five meat entrees. And two vegetarian entrees. Same question, how many meals can you order? Ah, but what's a meal? Well, from what you know about restaurants, They expect you to choose just one of these. They would be rather surprised if you decided to have both the salmon and the hamburger. So fine print, they expect you just to order an entree, period, one of them. Well, so then there are 10 things to do. There's a total of 10 entrees, and you need to choose one. To generalize that, well, let's label the addition principle. If we have this situation of k different tasks, The number of ways to do just one task where, let's assume the tasks don't overlap, similar formula, but now we add instead of multiplying. We either do task 1 or we do task 2, or we can do task k, they don't overlap. And if we're just doing one task, that's not the same as if we're doing all the tasks. Another problem. Say you're in this club with your friends, and you want to choose officers for the club. Well, how many ways can you do that? To make it definite, the club has nine members. How many ways? Well, say they choose a president, a vice president, um, a secretary, and a treasurer. And fine print, these four, these have to be four different people. I mean, there's no fair making Puba president and vice president and secretary and treasurer. So we need four different people. We have four tasks, and we need to do all of them. The 
first task number one is to choose the president. Well, if there are nine members, anyone can be president. Having done that, move on to task number two, choosing a vice president, and it has to be different from the president. So there's only eight people left eligible to be vice president. There are four tasks, and we need to do all of them. Having chosen president and vice president, there are seven people left, and we need to pick one of them. Having done that, that was the secretary. There are six people left, and we need one of those to be treasurer. I hope I multiplied this out ahead of time. Luckily, I did. 3,024. Three thousand and twenty-four different selections where selections are counted as different if they differ in any way. They may have the same choice for president, differ in vice president, say. Well, we want to generalize this and talk about permutation. If instead of nine members, the club has other number, N members. And instead of choosing four officers, we may choose K officers. Well, the same principle would apply, namely the implication principle. So let's write it down. Generalization. We want to abstract from this problem. Principles might be useful elsewhere. Well, say the club's N members and we're choosing K officers. We're going to P of n k. Yeah, not to be confused with the script p that we're using for the probability functions. For the number of ordered lists we can make. Here, we know who's in charge. It's the president. And the vice president is lower rank. So we're, these people come in a certain order. We'll look later at a problem where there are just four people unranked. This is orderless. There's one on top, or a first one, or, and then a second one, and so forth of k different people or objects. So in this problem, k was 4. We needed to have a list of 4 people for a ticket. We made from N possibilities. Well, so over here, uh, N was 9. We had 9 possibilities, and we needed an ordered list of 4 names. Well, the terminology. We say that this number is the number of mutations n objects take k at a time. 
That's just jarred. Well, we use the word permutations here. Yeah, but we need to say what this is. Well, it's, we generalize what we did here. We've got to choose these k different, they've got to be different, objects in order. One's going to be first. It's going to go on the top of the list. So there's n choices for put on top. Having done that, we go on to task number two. And altogether, there are k tasks. Having chosen the thing to go first on the list, there's now n minus one left. To choose for the number two spot. And then there's going to be n minus two ways to choose what goes third. Now, all together here, we need k factors multiplied together by the multiplication principle. So the last one is n minus k plus 1. Is it? Why? Well, think of it this way. It's n minus 0, n minus 1. The last one is n minus k minus 1. How many numbers are there from 0 to k minus 1 inclusive? k. And there's another way to write this, which is sometimes useful. n factorial over n minus k factorial. Well, some notation. That exclamation point by n factorial that's red n factorial. n times n minus 1 times all the way down to 1. Those things multiplied together. So 4 factorial means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 24. Uh, 3 factorial is only 6. 1 factorial, well, it's all the numbers from 1 to 1, and you multiply them together. Ah, 0 factorial. Zero factorial has to be 1 for the equations to work. Well, you can think of this as a condition. I mean, the idea of taking no numbers at all and multiplying them together is not very helpful. But it has to be 1. Over here, we've taken n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. So the numerator here is n, n minus 1, all the way down to 1. And the denominator, n minus k, minus k minus 1, all the way down to 1. Somewhere in this list is that number, n minus k plus 1.
and this part cancels with this part. There's an n minus k plus 1. The next thing is going to be the n minus k. And so from this point on, everything in the numerator is canceling with something in the denominator. Going back to this problem, we have nine possibilities, and we need an ordered list of size, size 4. we've said by the multiplication principle that's n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3. Four numbers. Same as before. Or we can also write it as 9 factorial over 5 factorial. n minus k is now 5. Well, let's check that these really agree. 9 factorial is an awkwardly large number. All the numbers 1 and 9 multiplied together, and that's some, some big number. 4 factorial, that's not so big, that's only 120. But the 5's cancel, the 4's cancel, the 3's cancel, the 2's cancel. We're left with the same thing we had before, 9 times 8 times 7 times 6. Well, back to looking at the original club. There are 3,024 total ways to choose those officers, but we don't want perhaps just any old way. One member of the club is George. We want, we want George to be an officer. Problem two. Club has same club. George. Okay, how many ways to choose those officers, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer? But George has to be one of them. He can, he can only be one, because the four have to be different. How many ways can we do it where George is the vice president, period? Ah, well, part B is easier. Let's start with that. George is going to be vice president. So there are only three tasks, not four. We need to choose the president, the secretary, and the treasurer. And there are altogether eight possibilities, because George is already vice president. There's eight people left. We have a 
formula for how to do that. Eight possibilities, and we need to choose three different ones in order. One to be president, one to be secretary, and one to be treasurer. So we know what that is. Somewhere. There it is. We know what number of permutations of the eight taken three at a time is going to be. Eight times seven times six, which is 336. That's the number of ways with George as vice president, but we haven't done part A yet. Okay, part A, there's going to be a larger number because we're less constrained. George doesn't have to be vice president, he just has to be something. We can do this by the addition principle. Do you remember the addition principle? There's 330 ways where George is the vice president. We just said that. By the same method, there's 336 ways where George is the president. And none of these overlap with empty of those, because president and the vice president have to be different. We're not done. There's another 336 where George is the secretary, and there's another 336 where George is the treasurer. And these are all different, because George is in a different position. In it. So we add these up. Luckily, I did that ahead of time, 1,344. But this course is about probability. What if the club decides to choose officers by lot? That is, they just choose at random and so that all 300, all 3,024 possible outcomes are equally likely. outcomes are equally likely. What's the probability that George makes it on? Well, it makes it on where? The probability that George is vice president or the probability that George is some officer or another. President or vice president or secretary or treasurer. Well, we've got all the things we need here. There are 3,024 outcomes, all equally likely. So we can use our formula for equally likely outcomes. Uh, there are 336 in which George is vice president. And That simplifies a lot. That's one ninth. Well, we could have seen that 
directly. Uh, the club has nine members. George is just as likely as anyone to be a vice president. He has one chance out of nine. And the probability that George is an officer at all, well, we're asking the probability of a certain event, the event where George is an officer. And we know how many outcomes there are in that event. Probability that George is an officer, call that event G for George, is the size of the event divided by the size of the sample space. There's uh, 1,344 outcomes where George is an officer, 3,024 altogether, four nine. Four ninths, yeah, we could have seen that in other ways. There's one ninth chance that he's vice president, and another one ninth chance of being president, and there's, those events are disjoint. There's no overlap. He can't be both. And another one ninth for secretary, and another ninth for, for treasurer. But suppose the choices are not ranked. How many ways? Same club, same nine members. And it's going to choose four names. The four person cleanup. difference being if with president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, we know who's on top and who's in second and so forth. On the cleanup committee, there are four names and they're, they're on the committee as equals. There's no one in charge. Having George and Alice and Bob and Carol is no different from having Alice and Bob and Carol and George. How many ways can we choose four names? Well, it's going to be a lot less than there were 3,024 ways to choose names that are ranked and But here we'll have a smaller number because we're counting George, Alice, Bob, and Carol as being the same as Alice, Bob, Carol, George. Well, so our first order of business next time is to figure out what this number is. Got up for today. <laughs>